This is Napoleon. Oui, oui, baguette. And he currently stands amongst the ruins of his once great war machine. You see, not too long ago, this great general had nearly all of Europe bowing to him. But now, he sits before a disaster. How did it all get to this? Well, a lot of it had to do with this pompous looking dude, the Duke of Wellington. Oh, hell no! These two would battle it out in the Battle of Waterloo. And they'd even meet a few hundred years later in a terrible Joaquin Phoenix movie. But we're getting way ahead of ourselves. The Napoleonic Wars need soldiers. So why don't we go ahead and build some of the armies before we get into the tale of Napoleon's downfall. If you guys enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe, and stay till the end because we have a giveaway for y'all. Let's look at the self-proclaimed emperor's army first. We've got ourselves the very classic Napoleonic Wars era French soldier from Lego themselves. As you can see, it's not awfully detailed or anything along those lines, pretty plain and simple. But they did end up upgrading these to look like this. Definitely, uh, resembling the original boys there, but all in all still fairly simple at the end of the day for the units. And LEGO did upgrade them one more time, and this is technically an officer here, but as you can see, once again, upgrading a number of their pieces, like their hats there. They've got the nice little shoulder pads as well, so, you know, an improvement overall. We do have... A couple other variants, like these units here, and even this guy, who's actually technically a Revolutionary War soldier, but you can easily use him as a Napoleonic French soldier. These authentic Lego troops are, of course, uh, fairly goaded with the sauce, but if you really want to build up an army, you gotta use fakes, baby. Yeah, baby! <laughs> this right here is a fake Napoleonic Wars French Linemen. As you can see, they borrow a decent amount of the authentic Lego design there, but a little bit more historically accurate to particular French troopers. And these guys are way better than the Lego minifigures for bulk army building because they only cost a dollar versus ten dollars. I know fake Lego is very controversial, but when it comes to mock building on a massive scale, I'm not looking to spend $100 on 10 minifigures when I could get 100 for $100. <laughs> but there's even a step above these guys into the customs market, and these are lower grade customs. French soldiers here from the Napoleonic Wars with very nice hat with a little plume at the very top. <laughs> Stop it. Get some help. Spyglass right there, and a pretty cool single shot rifle with bayonet that is equipable and unequipable. This is the ultimate final form of French soldier. Beyond the Emperor himself, who comes from United Bricks. But of course, we have different classes of soldiers for the French army. We also have ourselves <laughs> some French artillerymen, who of course are equipped with firing rods that they can utilize in their cannons here, as well as French sappers, who essentially wore the engineers of the brigade. They of course have their sapper hammer axe, and they'd build up barricades, fortifications, etc., etc., for the French camps. I love the way this guy looks. He do have a neck beard though. Here, I like to call this guy the sapper's apprentice because he does come with sapping tools. However, he's equipped more like a regular rifleman, so I suppose he would just be a helping hand and then fighting on the front lines. And of course, we are going to need the French officers. This guy has uh, a nice officer sword as well as a beauty of a flintlock pistol custom right there. Nice. He is ready for the war. And you might notice the plumes on top of all these guys' hats. We actually have a large variety of these, so uh, you can have different ranks and different brigades, different legions with different plumes in them to signify which soldier is a part of which one. It's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and assemble the French army. And there we have it, boys. Napoleon's army being guarded by a feral beast named Reyna. We've got our forward troopers here who look fantastic, and then linemen behind them supporting. We do have a number of artillery cannons as well as mortars that they can utilize in the battlefield, and a nice little supply horsey. Oh god, he, he lost his wagon of supplies. Well, there, there's the supplyman, and inside this was a, a grouping of cannonballs. My boy, you had one job. What are you? 
An idiot sandwich. Now, before the Battle of Waterloo, Napoleon was primarily fighting everywhere. He was fighting everywhere. The man got around. But infamously, he tried to attack Russia in the winter. So that's where this Russian officer comes in. By order of the Tsar, he has come to join the coalition against Napoleon. And of course, he's brought some men with him. These minifigures are very similar to the French boys. We have our cannon loader here, our artillery men. As you can see, they both come with very similar weapons, although I do much prefer the Russian uniforms to the French uniforms. I just think they look way cooler. Then we have the spotter for the artillery men. Exact same uniform, just with a telescope. His bayonet has come off. They clip on top of the rifles, but incredibly precariously. <laughs> and our final Russian soldier is going to be the Sapper. Again, I, I mentioned that they're very similar to the Frenchman, obviously. What's up, gamers? I'm here to tell you about Instant Gaming. Instant Gaming is an amazing place where you can get some fire deals on all sorts of video games. Uh, seriously, it's like 60 to 95% off, as you can see here. Uh, these are all of the Star Wars titles they have. They literally have every Star Wars title. Uh, you can also get XCOM here, Men of War Assault Squad 2, all of the games I play on the channel you can buy here for extremely cheap prices. If you use my affiliate link in the description, it helps me out a ton. So, Thank you guys for listening to this sponsorship and thank you to Instant Gaming for continuing to sponsor the channel. Slowly but surely, more nations join their fight against Napoleon, such as the Prussian officer here, Jebad Lebrecht von Blücher, who fought Napoleon initially in 1813, Battle of Leipzig, and then again during Waterloo. Then of course, we have the Hessians over here, the German soldiers. I really like their uniforms. They look pretty fire. And even Portuguese line infantrymen fought during the Napoleonic Wars. But Blucher here was not going to be enough. That's where his pal, the Duke of Wellington comes in. And the British forces. The main enemy of the French for pretty much forever. Well, until like World War One, but that's a whole other story. For the British, we have, of course, our classic red coats here and i believe these are actually supposed to be east indian trading company soldiers but like you know same diff lego later upgraded them to be a little bit more modern with the minifigure design but of course we have our fakes here god please no 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 no! Which honestly look fantastic and are much more conducive to making large-scale Napoleonic Wars battles. And we've got our higher-end customs, like this British Grenadier right here. So the British were ready to engage against Napoleon and the French. Napoleon really didn't have much support from really anyone, <laughs> not even the French government. He was homies with James Madison over here, and the War of 1812 was kind of an extension of the Napoleonic Wars, but they kind of got involved because of impressment. The Brits just love their sailors. That's got to be the best pirate I've ever seen. So it would seem. So we're not gonna include the Americans in our upcoming mock, but we are going to use this large scale battlefield. There's a good amount of dirt and mud and stuff. And then back here in this white space, we're gonna go ahead and build a small fort. So let's get it built. And there we go. The French sappers have finished building their fort and it's not as much a fort as a line of breastwork to form a trench for their soldiers to sit within. The Napoleonic Wars actually involved a lot of trench warfare. Not in the same style as World War I, but there was a lot of digging and, well, waiting after digging. So let's go ahead and set up the Frenchmen across this trench line. And there we have it, our first lineup of French troops. You might notice not all of the French linemen are actually on the field. Well, we needed to save a few to equip to some artillery. Let me show you what I mean. Over here, we have one loader, one firer, and an ammunition man. He'll bring the cannonballs to the front of the gun, put it in, this guy will shove it down with the ramrod, and this guy will let her rip. And for all of that, we need our spotter over here to give direction. In comes the French resupply man. He's going to bring in a mortar right here, where we're going to build our next mortar team. Two seconds later. There it is, two crew members. And next to them is going to be Napoleon speaking with the French officer. And Napoleon was often on the front lines or near the front lines in order to inspire passion in the troops. And they're gonna need it, because as you can see we've set up a few dead bodies on the battlefield already that's right the British are coming and the coalition against Napoleon this is not Waterloo this is just going to be a for fun trench battle in the Napoleonic Wars so let's go ahead and turn this into a war zone 
And there we go. Roy lads, well, first of all, we have the Russians doing a little bit of a line battle formation over here with their commanding officer ordering them to fire. In front of them, we have the coalition members doing an all out trench charge over this way, getting in deep against the French trenchers, likely to be shot, but hopefully they cause a distraction so these guys get some clear shots when the Frenchmen expose themselves. Over here, we have the French sappers who charged out, spooking this horse and throwing the rider off of him. Those sappers do more than just dig dirt. Then we have the British on their horseback here, firing rifles and pistols. Pretty inaccurately, I'm guessing, but they're heading straight into a cannon. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for them. That is not going to be good, especially if the cannon loads up some grape shot against these guys. But the Duke of Wellington is on the battlefield with his noble steed, as is our Prussian homie here, who's just watching the battlefield from the background. A fairly chaotic little Napoleonic Wars mock here, but always a fun one. I do have some more Napoleonic Wars soldiers coming in the mail fairly soon, so let me know in the comments if you guys want to see more Napoleonic action in the future. Now let's go ahead and get into that giveaway, boys. I'm going to be giving away this British and French soldier pair right here. All you gotta do is hit the like button, be subscribed to the channel with notifications turned on, and comment down below what other LEGO Wars you guys want me to cover. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace!